Okay, welcome to a new episode of Nate's Corner. Okay, this is the second episode of Nate's Corner now, and again, I said this show would be about anything and everything, whatever is on my mind at that given moment. Um, so any episode of Nate's Corner could be about anything. So last episode was about the Scooter box set, uh, box set edition of the Ace album, and today's episode is a political one about Donald Trump and why he should be President of the United States. So, came up with five reasons why Donald J. Trump will be a good President for the United States of America. Let's get started. Okay, so Tr Trump wants to create more jobs. He's already created a lot of jobs. He's uh, created, opened up uh, golf courses, hotels, and those have created jobs that are better paying than uh, minimum wage, that uh, have opportunities to move up. You could be a, a bellboy and then be a, a hotel manager and so forth versus say at a fast food restaurant, you would probably get paid minimum wage. And then if you get promoted to manager, you're only making 50 cents or a dollar more an hour. So if someone came to the United States legally and want a job and they got offered either a job at a fast food restaurant making minimum wage or at one of Trump's uh, businesses at hotels or golf courses and they got a starting position, there's there would be more better pay probably starting off at the Trump job and better opportunities for moving up than say the fast food place starting out. So he's not only created jobs but created jobs that are better than a lot of other jobs out there and he wants to continue creating jobs not only through his businesses, but um, in uh, uh, ways to like get rid of Obamacare, which will have more money for the middle class, where they won't be tax penalized, and then they can put that money towards investing in a business, so mom and pop can open up their business, and then that could create more jobs. So Trump wants to be a good jobs president, and there's one example of how he could be a good jobs president. Uh, he wants to beef up on Homeland Security. Uh, yeah, he wants to hire more patrol guards, border patrol guards. He wants to build a wall. And people that come in legally are able to go through the wall. And people that aren't, well, I mean, if they're not supposed to be here, they're not supposed to be here. That's the way it is. Uh, doesn't matter what country they're from, what nationality, religion, whatever. If they're not supposed to be here, they're not supposed to be here. And... You know, this could also help keep some of the terrorists out because, watch the news, some of the terrorists want to go to the United States and commit acts of violence. So, beefing up on Border Patrol and building a wall will help deter a lot of that. Uh, people that bash the wall, they say, well, it's not going to fix everything. The wall isn't going to fix everything, but it will help. If you put another gate on your door at home, it'll be one more obstacle someone would have to go through in order to break into your home. So, thus, walls can work. And look up the history of Cyprus. Um, there was an issue there, and then they built a wall, and there was less violence. And then, uh, there's been examples throughout history where walls have, they, they haven't necessarily taken care of every issue, but they've helped. There's plenty of issues, uh, situations throughout history where walls have helped. Um, and so, in this case, the wall can help, and plus, create jobs, because Americans will build the wall, which give them jobs, more border patrol at the wall, create more jobs. And then, he wants to take care of the veterans, too, which will put them in better spirits and help them uh, better fight terrorism and help defend the country. Okay, uh, he wants to get rid of political correctness, number three getting rid of political correctness, because how are we supposed to go forward in the world without uh, saying, you know what, I, I eventually got to say this. Imagine if you're at a job and you're the manager and you have an employee that's not doing things right and you just have to tell them, you know, it may not be politically correct to tell them, hey, look, you're doing it wrong, blah, 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 here's how it is, and if you don't straighten it up, I got to fire you. Well, some people might complain and say, oh, no, this manager is being mean. But no, he's trying to stop the guy from getting fired, so he's giving him a heads up, and he's 
you know, you might have to hurt the guy's feelings initially, but ultimately, if that employee steps up to the plate, he avoids getting fired. There you go. So, and there's just many things about political correctness, you know, and issues of, you know, some people have this belief, freedom of speech until you say something I don't like, then you need to shut up, which is wrong because freedom of speech should be freedom of speech. We should all be able to say what's on our, mi on our minds and have a certain amount of respect for every everyone's opinions. So Trump wants to support that and he shows it in his speeches. Whether you like him or not, that's who he is, that's what he believes in, that's what he stands for. Love him or hate him, but you got to respect freedom of speech and people saying what they, you know, want to say. Um, as long as they're not threatening to kill someone, that's obviously a different story, different topic, but in the case that you just got to speak your mind about topic, then by all means, go for it. I'll either agree or disagree. Uh, yeah, then he wants to help mixed martial arts in New York. Well, he may help mixed martial arts in New York. Let me clarify that. He has a history of supporting the sport of mixed martial arts. He uh, helped the UFC in its early days in the uh, UFC 20s era. Uh, Trump Plaza in Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey was used for one of the early UFCs. And then um, Trump started Affliction, which didn't last that long, but it was something that helped bring the sport to the limelight. And right now, uh, the sport's trying to get legalized in the state of New York, as, as I'm filming this episode, as we speak, it's trying to get legalized in New York, and it's having trouble. And if Trump's president, him being a New Yorker and being on the good side of the sport of mixed martial arts, he definitely won't hurt the possibility of the sport getting legalized in New York State. Uh, him being a New Yorker and his history backing up the sport obviously doesn't hurt a thing. And if the sport does get legalized in the state of New York, that will create job opportunities for trainers, uh, nursing, and medical, other medical staff to work on site at uh, MMA fights, um, you know, managers, promoters, uh, pro fighters, of course. So create a whole plethora of jobs, not just for, you know, the major organizations like Bellator or UFC or World Series Fighting, but the ones you don't hear about every day, uh, you know, RFA and, and uh, whatnot, and all, all those other smaller ones, you know, that, are, that have pro fighters in them. Um, they can have events in there. Then, last but not least, uh, shows he is willing to work with people regardless of uh, religion, race, gender, and so forth. Uh, Amorosa, a black female, he hired from The Apprentice. She got a good, uh, high-ranking position working for the Donald Trump Corporation. He hired her regardless of her race, regardless of her gender. Obviously, he's showing that he's not racist towards African Americans. Uh, he does business with Middle Eastern companies in his personal uh, businesses, uh, having hotels around the world, and obviously you have to get along to some degree with those people, and uh, he does uh, get along with, you know, people from um, other parts of the world, um, and other religions, and he uh, also... Um, uh, has uh, the Stump for Trump's uh, supporter girls that uh, there are two African-American ladies very outspoken on YouTube that support him and Donald Trump brought them on stage to do a little speech about him. Uh, was really nice to him. And he um, he's, again, open hotels and golf courses that have equal opportunity employment obviously, so he's gave jobs to people of, you know, Muslim background, Christian background, Jewish background, Gnostic background, so forth. Um, again, because his companies have to be equal opportunity employers, and if they aren't, then that's an issue, but we would have heard about it by now if that were a major issue, so obviously it's not a major issue at his businesses. 
So thus he has created jobs for everyone, regardless of race, religion, gender. So he is essentially an equal opportunity employer. So there you have it. That's why Nate's Corner officially endorses Donald J. Trump for President of the United States. So there you have it, guys. Take it or leave it. But Trump's the man. Numero uno. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. So until my next Nate's Corner episode, see ya.